I'm here at Simon Road Hokkien Mee today at their flagship Haugang outlet in search of the best Hokkien Mee in Singapore. And today we are here for their fried Hokkien prawn mee. Enough exploring the origins and authenticity. From this episode on, every single place that we'll be going has a group of people proclaiming that they're the best in Singapore. I've been listening to the comments and asking for suggestions all this while. And we are on the Rainbow Road now. We start off with Simon Road Hawk and Me. This place has been famous since the 70s. And it's one of those cases where they get so famous, they adopt the road name into their title. You get so many people saying that, oh, there's a store along Simon Road that sells great Hawk and Me, that you become the store. You're him. A Hawk and Me that never yielded to father time. Let's get it, boys. Hello. Hello. Uh, Hello. Is... Ah, is... 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 Ah, is... Ah, is... Ah, is... Ah, is... I'm so excited. This is so promising. One of the hacks that I read, right, was that to ask them to fry it till it's drier a bit. That's how the regulars like it, or fans of this store like it. And while I was taking uh while I was taking video, the uncle actually came over and told me that. I personally don't find a difference. I think it still looks great. But what that tells me is that he really cares about his product. You can see it from the two chilies. This, I think this should be more common. Usually we have to choose between the sour chili and the sweet sambal. Now, they have both. If there is one indication that you can look for when searching for good food, is to see how much the chef cares. Because I think it's very difficult. It is really underrated how someone can care about their products 20-30 years in. If I were to be real, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to keep that passion for 20-30 years. So excited. Anyway, here we go boys. Oh my word. Oh boy, oh boy. Finally, a proper dry version. Even though I explained in the previous episode, some people are still confused as to what is a wet and a dry version. You start the dish the same way. You add the noodles and then you add stock. But the dry version, you have to stop the stock earlier or add, don't add so much stock and let the rest of it reduce or get absorbed into the noodles. But then here's the challenge. If the noodles are wet and absorbing moisture, you need skill on the wok to convert it into this dry, airy, fried noodle dish. And they have done it. The dry version of a Hokkien Mee is not just a less wet Hokkien Mee. This is the first proper dry Hokkien Mee I have had. And the next critical key in frying is oiliness. When frying noodles or rice, oiliness is the key to flavour and texture. You want just enough oil to cook each noodle and each rice grain such that they slip and slide against each other on the wok. Go look at the best fried rice out there. You will find that each rice grain is coated such that they have that slightest shine to them. But not enough oil such that it pulls or is obvious. And looking at the plate now, after you are done, you can see just the right amount of oil was used. And finally, we can talk about this. When everything else falls in place, when everything else is right, now the wok haze shows so well. You can see that the noodles is a little darker, there are burnt beads and it all comes together with that wok hay. Truly a proper dry version. And now for the missus. They try to write me. Uh. Oh. 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 They gave me another wet version because I asked for the dry version, right? So this is how it's supposed to head, according to them. You can tell that it's more pale and obviously more liquid. Now normally I won't accept such bribes, but we cannot waste food, right? Right. Ah, what to do? Wet version. Oh my word. Oh my word. 
the wet version leaves the dry version in the dust when it comes to flavor. Yes, that was good, but this is two times more flavorful. So far in the series, I talked about, you know, seafood flavor and lard flavor and egg flavor, right? But here, there's only one flavor. I find it difficult to separate them on my palate. And this taste, I'm, I'm almost getting nostalgic. I felt like I had this taste when I was very young. This Hokkien Mee taste, where even the alkaline taste of the noodles actually benefits the flavor profile. If I were to give one miss, it is that even their wet version is still pretty dry. There's no lack of flavor whatsoever, but I would have liked a little bit more gravy just to make the texture a little bit more like the wet version, a little bit more slippery, a little bit more slurpable. But nitpicking, nitpicking to a very high extent. Let's get to the verdict, boys. One noodle I'll walk for the Hokkien Mee, two noodles I'll take a bus for the Hokkien Mee, and three noodles I'll go anywhere in Singapore for the Hokkien Mee. And Simon wrote Hokkien Mee is... Three noodles. This is smelling like top three when all is said and done. It's, it's not just good, it's exactly where I want it to be. The dry version tastes like what I, I want a dry version to taste like. The wet version, if a little bit better, tastes you know what I want my wet version to taste like. So it's not just good, it's suited to my taste. At $5 a plate for these two plates, the amount of noodles is very sufficient as well. I'm not into counting prawns and squid and ingredients because like, I think that's very secondary. Just give me a good noodle dish and they have done that. Yeah, three noodles. Both the wet and the dry version. Oh, the rainbow road is starting out well. I cannot wait to get to the next place. But for now, that's all I have for you guys this time. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Uh, 谢谢, uh, <laughs> 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 <la